So this little fly is my um, ultimate blood worm. It's an ideal pattern for still water trout through the winter. When they're scraping along the bottom, uh, feeding on the, the blood worm, which turns into the midge, your buzzer, basically. <coughs> but this fly has got all the key components to make it very, very successful. You can fish it under a bung. You can fish it on the end on the point position of a long leader or a couple of buzzers further up. But it's just one of those patterns that does extremely well for me. Um, and you can see... It's got a few key triggers. I think the, the key point, especially for a fly tying point of view, is this furled um, span flex tail. It just really looks apart. It gives it a little bit extra movement as well. And quite often, a bit like a squirmy, uh, that longer tail, when the trout mouth the fly, they'll pull on that. There's no resistance. And they'll end up swallowing it, basically. The eyes, again, are an absolute hot spot. Um, just a little touch of varnish on there and away you go. It really makes such a big difference to the fly having those eyes there. Um, just a little bit of black varnish on the bead. And obviously the body, the body as well, that's um, the the same as the tail. Just just an exceptional little fly. So uh, let's go ahead and tie it. Just get a, a hook in the vise. Um, Hook a bead, obviously. This is a 3.3 mil bead. And the actual hook that I'm using is a, a curved hook. This is a, a check name hook, fully mill check name hook. And this is a size uh, 10 for these purposes. Color bright number three in red and a red span flex. So i just start by winding on some, some of the floss there. Creating a body so which I can tie on. Coming down to a point as it starts coming around down the bend of the hook. Just tidy that frayed end up there. Back up to the top, this is going to be my tying in point. I'm just putting a bed of, bed of floss in here. So that I've got my body. And now I come in with my, my span flex and what I'll do is I'll twist one end clockwise and one end anti-clockwise. So they're pulling against each other and what that'll do is it'll make it furl. It'll pull up against each other. One end going one way, one end going another. So it's easy enough to do. You just want the furling point to be in the middle. As you can see there's a bit too far toward one side. You kind of want it to be in the middle. It might take you a couple of times, but you'll get it and eventually the middle will sit and start to furl like that. You can see they just binds into each other. So you just grab that so it doesn't unfurl, obviously. And then we've got to tie that in. That's your tail. Tie in the tail section. Catch it in just behind the bead. It just keeps everything nice and even. <coughs> now my tension. Wind down the body. Pull that tail, take the curve out, the furl out. You've got a flat bit to tie on, and then it'll curl back up again. As soon as you take your fingers off it like that. There's your fur tail bed bedded in. And then we your, keep your spine flex under a lot of tension when you cut it. It just makes the cutting off a lot cleaner. The stuff's terrible. So if you leave a tiny stub end, uh, it's hard to tidy up. So if you just pull that tight with tension, you'll get that a clean cut every time. Building up my thread again. Keeping the body nice and even. And I'm get my, my body organized. So there's the span flex. Beautiful blood red color. A friend of mine dyed that for me. Uh, what a great job he did of it. So we just got to catch this in. Again, leave a tag end. If you leave a stub end, you'll not be able to cut it flush. Quite a, quite a long tag end there, and then keep it under tension. And then winding down to your tail. Like so. Back up. Again, whole body wraps, keeping everything tidy. Pull this under tension. 
doesn't leave a button end. Perfect. So I'm just tidying up behind the bead basically. Um, I want a tying off point so it needs to be, the floss needs to be butted up against the, the bead. Got a little bit of a tape again on there as well. Park a whip finish in there just to keep the floss there. And now I'm going to wind, wind the body up. Get a turn it so you can see. Every turn touching the other, there's no spaces there. And don't pull it tight. Um, keep the span flex fat so you can really see that segmentation. Like that. If you pull it tight, you just get a smooth body, which we can do with floss. We want that segmentation. A couple of locking wraps. Coming over the flexi floss, sorry, span flex. And like I mentioned, keeping everything tight, snip off. Tighten everything up so the bead's secure. Because of your threads, this, your, your floss is the same color as the, the flexi floss. It all looks like one. We got a stick of whip finish in there, keeping that taper. Nice and tight. Snip off the floss. And now you can see basically how it sits just now. So we got to do a couple of other things just to finish the fly off. Just makes it a more secure and robust pattern. Bit of varnish. This is just clear vineyard cilia. Um, any varnish will do. Give it a couple of coats. Always give it a couple of coats. Just makes for a more durable fly. Looks apart as well. I think the shine of it with that segmentation. <coughs> it just looks really nice. There you go. Nicely covered. Perfect body. And now for the the final little bit. And that's the, the eyes. The additional eyes make such a big difference to this fly. Such a big difference. So you get a cocktail stick, some black varnish or golf, whatever. As long as it's black, spot on both sides. And that will dry hard and secure. And there it is. The perfect ultimate blood worm. An exceptional little fly. And one that works great through the winter months. And the start of the season, to be fair. So in March and April, it's still working its magic. There's the other one. Get a load of those in your box. Because they're absolutely devastating. Um, like I say, fish it under the bung like a puddle bug. Or you can fish it on a floater. Fish it on your own as well. If you want a long lead, let it bounce the bottom. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed that, folks. If you did, be kind enough to subscribe to my channel. There's plenty more fly fishing and fly tying videos on there. Thanks ever so much for watching. Take care, folks. And bye-bye.